Now, in the Oslo Agreement, there was supposed to be a five-year interim period to, until 1999, where the uh, agreement will be complete. That is, the Israeli occupation is ending and the Palestinian state is established. Now we are in 2016, and it is not that the Israeli occupation is not ending. The Israeli occupation is fortified with the uh, two aspects of this fortification of the occupation. Number one is the continued settlement of the Palestinian territory in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, which is the base for the future Palestinian state. But when it is settled by the Israelis, bringing immigrants from all over the, the world and facilitating their uh, presence in this territory, it means that they uh, would not uh, give room for the establishment of the Palestinian state. Second, is that the, the Israel is controlling the lives of the Palestinians after 23 years of signing of that agreement. The movement is, of the Palestinians within their country is restricted. The development of their land. Now, they divided, according to the Oslo, they divided the, the land of the West Bank and East Jerusalem into three areas. Area A, Area B, Area C. Area C, which is about 62% of the total area of the West Bank, is totally controlled security-wise and administrative-wise by the Israelis. If, if, if a Palestinian builds a house for his children or for himself, the Israelis will come and demolish that house. The number of houses being demolished in, the, in this year, year 2016, exceeded uh, 300 houses thus far. Total villages were destroyed, erased to the ground, especially one in the, in the Negev. It was destroyed a hundred times. Each time they destroyed, the uh, community were rebuilt it, was small, and then they come and destroy it again. Uh, so the, the uh, international community or the United Nations or the American administration, which is the lead of these efforts for implementing the Oslo Accords, they formed uh, a committee called the Quartet from the United States, the United Nations, European Union, and uh, Russia. This quartet is supposed to look after the implementation of the agreements. Unfortunately, the quartet was impotent uh, due uh, to the influence of the American administration on the quartet, the outcome. In fact, the representative of the American administration uh, in the whole process was Dennis Ross. Dennis Ross who uh, gave a speech to the Central Synagogue in Washington in New York about uh, two months ago, where he admitted that he was the advocate of Israel and Israeli policies, rather than the objective advocate of peace and peacemaking between Israelis and Palestinians. And that shows from the start, of course, was clear, but not anyone is admitting that, the American administration was biased from day one, and they wanted to manage the conflict rather than solve the conflict. Lately, we have the French who came up with an initiative. Uh, they, want, they knew where are the uh, loopholes in the, in the quartet uh, process, uh, so they called 28 foreign ministers of important uh, countries that are related somehow from the region and from the international scene. They met in Paris on the 3rd of June. They agreed that this conflict has to be solved within a framework of international settlement, like how they solved the Iranian nuclear uh, uh, problem. They have the five plus one group that met for months, but they have one goal, it's to prevent Iran from developing its nuclear capabilities. The same thing, the French initiative says that an international conference should be held before the end of this year, whereby it will uh, apply Security Council resolutions relevant to the conflict 
which calls for ending the Israeli occupation and establishing the Palestinian state. Uh, there is some resentment on the part of the Americans. Uh, they don't want, it seems to me, to, to leave their lead role in, in the Middle East, uh, including the peace process, and protection of the Israeli uh, continued policies of aggression and discrimination. Now, in Israel itself, there are some voices, not from the progressive elements of Israel, and there are a few, of course, now, but even from the establishment. In the Knesset, the head of the Israeli opposition, major opposition, Herzog, he said in his speech when the Knesset opened its session uh, early in, in uh, June, he said that Israel is drifting to fascism and racial status. This is, uh, should be a warning, not only for the, the people in the region, but also should be a warning for the friends of Israel, especially in the Jewish communities abroad. Is this Israel that they wanted or they dreamed of having when it is going that way? Thus far, about 40, 40 resolutions, whether passed in the Knesset or still tabled, discussed in the second or first reading. These 40 resolutions are stand as racist resolutions. When there are voices saying that in the, the hospitals, maternity uh, quarter, they should separate the Palestinian uh, ladies who are given birth uh, from the Israeli ones because they don't want to be contaminated by the uh, quote unquote going uh, woman. That's one of the things. Even renting houses, you would see signs within the Israeli uh, uh, cities or townships or quarters, uh, no Arabs allowed. This, they is, the Jews themselves suffered from this discrimination in the past. And it should, uh, it should hit a, a, a raw nerve in them and oppose these practices. The voices within Israel are still very small. The, 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 the reason I think Israel has been drifting on its political system towards extreme uh, and the right that denies everybody else's except them. Uh, and here the voice has to be strong outside uh, what is offered now order to live in, in perpetuation of conflict, of bloodshed, of, of hatred, of whatever, or discrimination, or subjugation, I think there is a chance uh, that uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis can live side by side, but not one instead of the other, side by side. Maybe in the future, if they can decide to have closer relations, that comes with time. But otherwise, if it is not, if the Palestinians continue to be denied their right to self-determination, their right to be as human beings treated equally with respect to their human rights, with respect to their national rights, I'm sure this will not uh, help bringing about peace and stability in the region. Therefore, we would like to see an international voice like the voice which helped end the apartheid regime in South Africa through pressure on the apartheid regime that the right must be supported by everyone and anyone who drifting from denying the others should be stopped and uh, try to uh, create a better future for both Israelis and Palestinians. I think that uh, we have the opportunity of uh, conversing with uh, Abdullah Abdullah at this moment. Uh, so I would invite you uh, to uh, present uh, any questions that you may have uh, for this uh, rather unique op opportunity here in, in Canada and Quebec. Uh, so I, if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead. If 
you'd like any elaborations, please ask. Uh, but I think it's rather obvious uh, that uh, we have uh, an accurate representation of what the current political context is and the prospects uh, for a, a true uh, peaceful uh, resolution of this conflict, which has been held by the Palestine Liberation Organization since its inception uh, in 1964. Four. We cannot ask you a question? If you can, I'm here. <laughs> I talk to one Unless you're class. committed. No, no, it's, uh, there are three other sessions. Okay. May I just a quick question I, I for already, him and then later for you? I already invited okay. you, yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, thank you so much for uh, for what you have presented to us. And I will now discuss uh, the Oslo Agreement with all its problems. My question to you uh, as a Palestinian, uh, uh, what do you think is um, uh, currently our role as grassroots activists living in the West? Uh, like there's one uh, social movement taking place, global solidarity movements in the context of BTS, but there are any like many other uh, ideas maybe that we can do. Like, what do you suggest? Uh, uh, we are promoting the uh, international uh, moral pressure on the aggressive policies of Israel, and this is expanding. No doubt uh, that the situation. I can compare the situation when I came back. I came here to this country in 1972, and this, uh, what is now, it's completely different. There is more awareness. There is more engagement of the younger generation, especially with the social uh, media. Uh, and many of them, in fact, were of the Jewish faith. Because the ideals of Judaism that these people were taught, as every religion teaches their own ideas and their values, and when they compare to what is happening in Israel, it, it, it does not uh, coincide with it. It's, and therefore, they are concerned what would happen in the future if there is no Palestinian state created in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. And this is, the West Bank and, and the Gaza Strip is 20, about 20, 22% of the total area of Palestine. Uh, so when we accept this historical compromise of accepting this, it means we wanted to have a base for our people to identify with. If that is not happening, what would happen west of the Jordan River in historic Palestine? There will be two distinct peoples, the Palestinians and the Israelis. In fact, if we were to compare numbers, the Palestinians are probably a bit more in number than the Israeli uh, Jews, uh, more than six million each side. Uh, given that about 750,000 Israelis are living permanently in North America, but still counted as Israelis and they're counted there. So what would happen in this case? And that's a question that's posed really before the Jews more than anybody else. Israel has one of two options in this case. It cannot be democratic, as they claim Israel is the only democracy they see. But it cannot be democratic, because democratic means one man, one voice, one vote. And then Israel will lose its uh, control of, the, of the, this area, region, west of the Jordan River. Then it has to apply apartheid uh, rule, exactly a second South Africa in the 21st century. Is this uh, Israel that the Jews wanted to see? This question has been raised, but very in a shy way among some Jew Israeli thinkers inside Palestine. But there, the overwhelming uh, control of, 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 of Israel there is the extreme right, the fascist elements. A look at the composition of the Israeli government of today. There is no voice for even uh, middle uh, voices. The labor, for example, is oh, it's ruled Israel from 1948 until 1977 continuously, and then shared and and uh, afterwards. Now they they are uh, no they have no influence whatsoever on the Israeli general public. Their uh, their power is reduced even further 
by the overwhelming power that is shared by the extreme uh, racist discriminatory elements within Israeli political system. Uh, therefore, uh, we believe that there is no military solution to the Israeli Palestinian war. And that can, one can trace back to 1979 after the signing of Camp David between Israel and Egypt. But then, uh, also, it's impossible for the apartheid-like regime in Israel to continue against the Palestinians. But the Palestinians are the only people in the world under occupation, denied their right to self-determination, which is considered one of the basic fundamental rights in the Human Rights Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Therefore, uh, we, we believe that mounting pressure on the Israeli, within the Israeli political uh, scene, especially uh, they are very much worried about the BDS activities, its role in bringing about, so it's, it's considered a political aspect. Uh, as the United Church of Canada uh, explained their uh, stand on boycotting the Israeli uh, settlements products, they said this is a product of a stolen land and God did not allow us to buy or eat or use stolen goods. Therefore, we decide to boycott the products of the Israeli settlements. That's one aspect. Then another aspect is that the uh, small number of uh, Israelis who are conscious of uh, human rights of others, who uh, of equality with others, who are also very much concerned of the future of what Israel they wanted to see in the future that is living in harmony, living in normal relations with its neighbors with no threat to security or no threat to safety, but rather uh, a uh, very uh, acceptable uh, norm of, of, of life between uh, the Israelis and their neighbors as it was the case before the creation of Israel in 1948, recorded by one Israeli uh, uh, very well-known uh, Moshe Minowan, the father of Yehudi Minowan, the violinist, who wrote a book, The Decadence of Judaism in Our Times, where he described how, as a young Jew coming in 1916 to Palestine from Russia, how he was treated with his mother uh, by a Palestinian doctor, uh, and how they were playing uh, in the streets with the Palestinian kids until Zionism came and created this conflict, this cleavage between Palestinians and Israelis. We believe that with some uh, strong, I mean, there are several factors actually, not one factor that can contribute to the end. Number one, we, we need to stick to, to our principles and uh, try to uh, reach out to as many people as possible. We rely very much on what we call the non-Palestinian Palestinians, plus, of course, of Palestinian rules. But the non-Palestinian Palestinians, those who read about the question of Palestine, who were become sympathetic, who are supporter of the protection of the human rights of the Palestinians as human beings, to protect the right to self-determination, to end the occupation and the restriction on their movement in their own country. Now, this uh, we try to, and uh, of course, our presence here to this forum is in that direction, to reach out to as many people as we can, to get support as much as we can. And finally, I believe uh, when this uh, support is, is universal, it will make an impact on Israel and any Israeli government in the future. Thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, we understand that you uh, are required to make uh, your interventions in uh, the other uh, activities as well. Finally, the departure of the United Kingdom from the European Union, uh, no doubt it's a blow to the idea of uh, the European Union. Uh, collective 
power in Europe making again. And uh, that's one thing. Another thing, uh, some cities in Europe, be it Munich, uh, Nice, uh, Paris, uh, Brussels, suffered from terrorist attacks. And this is a concern for not only for the Europeans, but for everybody. I mean, how we have to uh, have our concerted efforts to confront any violence coming from where it comes, be it in, in Miami or uh, not Miami. That's Orlando. Huh? Orlando. Orlando in, 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 in Florida or uh, in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we, we have to be more concerned of the best possible ways of living in the future for our uh, generation. Uh, we are facing many problems, not only uh, the, the violence between uh, countries, but also we are facing diseases, we are facing uh, climate change, we are facing uh, this, and we are facing poverty. Uh, and how can we uh, make our goal is to reduce as much as we can the differences between the peoples. Uh, because the root cause of violence is the need. That need varies from one country to another, from one people to another. Uh, people need uh, a good life. People need uh, fight uh, poverty, to uh, oppose uh, the uh, pollution and the atmosphere and all these things. Now, we're, we're trying to reduce the suffering of the people, uh, feeling everyone that is equal to the other. I think that would help us in our uh, continued battle as a, a human uh, race to, to uh, make a better future for our children, to make our planet a better place to live in.